Hey friends, I am so glad you're here. This week's dinner roundup are some of my very favorite kind of meals to make. So if you're looking for some meals that are quick, easy, delicious, and get you in and out of that kitchen quick, just sit back, relax, grab you a glass of sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Hey friends, it's Mel and welcome to my kitchen. This week I've got some skillet meals for you. If you are in the mood for something that can be quick, easy, one dish and done, you've come to the right place. I'm going to start out tonight with a country hamburger and potato skillet dish. So let's get to making them. I hope that everybody has had a good weekend. We're going to start out an easy week of meals. I just really felt like I needed some one dish or one skillet meals. I have another video. I will link it at the end of this video and I'll put it down in the description box for you where I made some skillet meals a time before, but these are different. These are all new ones. Um, I've already made one this week and it was out of this world. Tonight's is called Country Hamburger Skillet Dinner. I mean, if you don't have nothing but the basics, you can make this meal. Should be about 30 or 40 minute dish. I'm starting out with a pound of ground beef over here that I am browning up. And once it gets just a little bit more on the way, I'm going to throw some garlic in it. And I've got four potatoes about this size right here. Now, I'll link you a recipe to this below. And they used uh, golden Yukon Gold potatoes, but I've just either got russet or Idaho. I don't know what they are. But I'm going to slice them up and I'm not going to peel them. And I've got about half of an onion here and I'm going to... I'm going to dice it. I think you could do big, like, long strips of it. But I just like my onion a little bit smaller in ground beef. So let's just get that out of the way. Okay. I've got you here in between my arms. I'm going <laughs> to do this ghost style. <laughs> And see if I can show you how thin I'm going to try to slice these. Not paper thin, but, you know, about, but I want them about like that right there. You know, I'm not good with measurements, so I don't know what that is. But they're all this is cooking on top of the stove. None of this even has to go into the oven to get, you know, browned up or anything. Some of these that are really wide, you know what? I think I'm going to cut these in half. That one's okay. It's going to go down the middle because those are pretty big potatoes. Okay, here's a look at my meat. It's almost browned up. This goes against everything any of us believe, but this recipe says do not drain the grease. And it's because you're going to cook the potatoes and everything in this skillet. And the writer of this recipe said, you're going to cook these potatoes in this flavor. <laughs> you don't call it grease, you call it flavor. Okay, I've got my hamburger cooked through pretty good there. I'm just going to take a nice spoonful of this garlic. Get that sauteed just a little bit. Then you're going to take that half an onion, which may not be enough. This is a lot. You're going to take those potatoes and half an onion. Like I said, I may need more onion. We'll just have to see. But this was just four potatoes. going to take all this and put it in here with the grease and the meat and the garlic. And you'll need a pretty good size skillet for this. This is the biggest skillet that I have before I did this. I got ahead of myself. I meant to push half this meat to the side and put some potatoes in, then push the meat over it and then do the other side, but it's all right. We incorporate it all. So I'm just going to get it spread out a little bit. Now we're going to do some seasonings. Going to do some black pepper, of course. 
going to do some salt and garlic powder. That's what the recipe calls for. I'm going to use my Anti No No's Everything. It's got garlic, onion powder, and salt in it. And I love this. And look, guys, I'm going to have to buy me another bottle of this. I loved this stuff. And Patrick used some when he was doing some ribs or a pork butt or something. And when you smoke stuff on the smoker, like, they use a lot of seasoning on that. So, it's about gone. Now, the recipe does not call for the dub sauce. But all of this right here, to me, this just is screaming for some dub sauce here. So, now we're going to mix all this in together. I don't know about y'all, but I love a one-dish meal. I love a casserole. And I especially like these skillet meals. Number one, they're easy. And then number two, you don't have all the pots and pans to clean up. I'm just gonna have this one skillet that I gotta wash up as far as, you know, cooking stuff goes. Still have your plates, but you know, you can eat on paper plates. There ain't no crime against that. I've just got cheap and quit buying them because they've gotten plum expensive. And I thought, well, I have a dishwasher. I can't complain, so we've just all been eating on regular plates for a long time now. Maybe this summer I may go back to buying them some, but that's all you got. And one skillet to wash up, and then, you know, rinse your plates off and throw them in the dishwasher if you got a dishwasher. Or don't. It's up to you. Let me know in the comments. Are you team... Rinse your dishes before you put them in the dishwasher? Or do you just throw them in their food and all? I'm anxious to know. All right, I think I've got that pretty well incorporated. Got my seasonings mixed in there. Oh, yeah, this is perfect meat and potato ratio, too. So now I've got it like this, and I've got it... I've probably got mine on about medium heat here. And I'm just going to take a lid and put over this and let it cook for about 15 minutes. And this is my big pan that calls for the pizza pan lid. Or what is it, Fallon and them call it? The universal lid? I had to get out my universal lid for this skillet because I don't have a real lid that fits it. So we're going to cook this for 15 minutes. Then we're going to come back. We're going to move everything that's on the bottom up to the top and do this process again. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. Let's see what we got. And move my lid real quick and carefully. Okay, let's turn this over and see what we got. Oh, that looks good. It's got kind of crusty on the bottom. That's what we like. Okay, I'm just going to try to spread them out a little bit better again. I'm going to put that lid back on. And I did cut them down just a smidge to like medium low. Got them covered. I'm going to cook them about 15 more minutes. And in the meantime, I will start putting salads together. You could do any kind of side you wanted to do with this or none at all. I believe everything is done. Oh, yeah. I may got a little too done on parts. I'm going to give it all one more big stir. And then we got one more awesome little step. I'm going to take some cheese. And if you have like a Monterey Jack blend that would melt so pretty on here but i've just got cheddar open i'm gonna grab my lid and put it back over it and let that get nice and melted let's get ready to eat friends this meal right here is definitely country comfort food who does not like a pan of fried potatoes and hamburger meat. It was delicious, easy, and hit all the right spots. And I put a salad with a couple different meals this week. You may get sick of seeing us eat salads on the side here, but we love them and there's nothing any better for you than leafy greens. You can serve this up just like it is, but I thought some Heinz 57 might be good on this, and I tried that with mine. It was delicious, and Maddie put a little ranch dressing over hers. 
Our next skillet meal is going to start with some thin chicken breast. I have thin sliced chicken breast, or you can use two large breasts and just butterfly them. And you're going to season them up with some salt and pepper. And the recipe calls for a half a teaspoon of chili powder and half a teaspoon of garlic powder, but we're just sprinkling on as we see fit. We're going to go a little bit heavy because we're just going to season up one side of these. You're going to put these in some olive oil on top of the stove in your skillet and you're just going to get them till they're golden brown almost all the way done but it's okay if they're not quite there yet because you do finish this off in the oven and i have an extra chicken breast over there that wouldn't fit in my skillet that we had to do separately but you're going to remove that chicken and then you're going to saute up half an onion once you get that kind of translucent, you're going to add in about three cans of stuff here. We're going to do a can of Rotel, and we are going to drain the juice off of all of these cans. Going to put in a can of whole kernel sweet corn, and a can of black beans, and you want to rinse those as well as drain them. And we're going to hit it with some paprika here, about half a teaspoonful. You're going to stir all that together and let it come up to a nice warm temperature. And then you're just going to nestle those chicken breasts back underneath all this stuff in your skillet. And I just kind of moved it around and then I would cover it up and um, just get them all nestled in there. And you'll notice this is not my hands this week. Ryan was here and he wanted to cook something. I said, well, I've got a new dish I want to try. So I just supervised while he did the cooking. <laughs> and I'm gonna take some Monterey Jack cheese and I'm gonna first concentrate where my chicken breasts are at. Then I'm just gonna sprinkle the rest of it all kind of over the skillet. Also had a little bit of cheddar cheese I come back over the top with. And you're going to put this in a preheated 400 degree oven for about five to seven minutes. You want to make sure your chicken gets up to 165 degrees internally. But look how beautiful this looks. It is so flavorful. I think this might have been my favorite skillet meal this week. It was absolutely delicious and I cut it open here so you can see there is actually chicken under there very thin but the best part of this meal to me were all the flavors the seasonings and all these veggies it just tastes so bright spicy just a little bit if you like rice this would make a beautiful presentation on a bed of rice but I don't like rice so I ate mine with some tortilla chips the last skillet meal this week is also a chicken skillet, and we're gonna use about half this box of pasta. And I actually have some shredded chicken that I had cooked up in the crock pot, it had been in my freezer, so I pulled that out. And then we've got some butter, I've got about half a pack of ranch seasoning, garlic, flour, and cheese. I mean, this is basically pantry staples here. So I have melted in my skillet here two tablespoons full of butter and I'm going to throw in a big spoonful of garlic and a couple big tablespoons of flour. Just going to make a little roux out of this here. Now while I am making this roux, I've got that chicken in a sink full of just cool water thawing out over there so it will be ready to go and you just want to cook this oh a minute or two until it begins to thicken up and then you're going to slowly just stir in your milk and it's about a cup and a half and you want to make sure and get all the good drippings up off the bottom and you're just going to whisk this together until it begins to get thickened You can see how it starts to stick to the side there just a little bit and you know you are right on the money. Now I reduced the heat just a little bit on my 
mixture here and I'm gonna add in two cups of cheese and get it all melted down and stirred in there together. Now I'm gonna take about half of that bag of chicken. This is probably about two cups of shredded chicken. And I like to cook chicken up in the crock pot and just have it shredded up on hand in the freezer for nights like this. It's a great way to use up any kind of leftover chicken. You could use a rotisserie chicken, or you could just bake up your chicken, or use canned chicken. You could do a million different ways with this recipe right here. So I'm getting all that stirred in and making sure it's all broken apart. And then we're supposed to add in, I believe it's a tablespoon of ranch dressing. I think that's about what I had here in this packet. I had used half of it in another recipe. So I just threw that in. And then of course I'm gonna put in some black pepper and you just use your own taste on that, but I like black pepper pretty good. And I just like to stir a little bit after I add in seasonings and stuff like that, just to kind of start the process. And you're gonna add in your half a box of pasta. I used bow ties, you could use the curly rotinis, penne, use whatever you like, but it does call for eight ounces of it. And I did reserve my pasta water because I thought I may want to go in and put a little bit in it to thin it out later. And sure enough, I did end up doing that. So just always save you a little bit of that water back in case you need it. Now I'm gonna go in with about another half a cup of cheese and get all of that stirred in. Everything's coming together. It's all melted in there and yummy, yummy, yummy. And then you will see we had another salad this night. This dish was so good. It's very light flavor. You really taste the garlic in it, but it's not too much and it's not a real twangy ranch. This is just a really balanced taste. You got a little bit of everything, but not overwhelming with anything. This was a delicious meal. Easy, quick, these were 30, 40 minute meals at the most this week, and only a skillet to clean up. Friends, I hope that you have enjoyed this week's video. Thank you so much for being here and welcome to all of our new friends. I hope that you're enjoying a lot of fun content here and getting to know all of my friends in the comments. Speaking of comments, I am behind pretty bad. I love to go back and respond individually to every comment, but to get caught up, I may just have to go back and heart them as I read them. But please don't think that I'm ever ignoring them. That, to me, is the most enjoyable part of YouTube, is our community and the comments. But it's also the most hard for me to keep up on. Time gets busy with us all. But thank you so much for being here. I love each and every one of you. And until I see you next week, I send you love from my kitchen.